Well, I think it's about time for an update. Today is June 7th, and although the weather has been cool and the sun has been trying to peek through, I can hear the birds chirping, love is in the air, and things are happening. So let's go get an update on this orchard. Now I thought it'd be fun to go through all of this today, including the figs. So let's just start here with the grapes. As you can see, they're doing awesome. Every year these grapes get better and better and better and just really put on a ton of beautiful new growth and lots and lots of grapes everywhere you look. Now I meant to prune this one back this year and I didn't get around to it. So it's kind of hanging out here quite a ways, but I'll prune it probably next winter. They're really starting to develop nicely. In the beginning, they didn't put on a whole lot of growth and they didn't produce much in the way of grapes. But uh, as the years have gone on, I'm, I think I planted these maybe four years ago, five years ago, they are really starting to pump out a ton of produce. And you can look and see here, look at this. There's some right here. We've got some back in there, all along the tops of all of these all of these little sprouts we've got tons of grapes all throughout there i can't wait till the end of summer when these things are really just ripening up nicely all right let's get in here and check out the strawberries here so i just mowed all of this everything's looking really nice right now the best thing we ever did was plant grass throughout this area but uh these strawberries look at this absolutely amazing they are massive and to be honest I keep coming out here and looking at these and I can't remember the variety over here, but they are massive. They are so much bigger than what we had there before, but these are Sequoia. Now I have all this in a video, so I need to go back and find that video and watch it to let you know what the variety is. I'll probably do that while I'm editing this and then I can put it up there for you. But it's kind of funny because the sequoia are smaller than that variety right there. Now, if you guys remember, we actually pulled out all of our Tristar tri strawberries, which were supposed to be just an exquisite strawberry, really nice flavor, one of the sweetest, best tasting strawberries. And they were, however, they were very small, even after having them in here for like three years. They never got good size, even with tons of watering, and they were ever bears, so they would produce all summer long. So we never got, I mean, we got a lot of them, but never a, a huge crop. And so trying to get enough to can all of them and, you know, get enough, enough to make a big batch of jam was always kind of a battle, especially since they were so small and they were just real labor intensive. So we decided to go with June bearing uh, plants here. Now <laughs> we've had a really late, cool spring with not a lot of sun. And so I don't know if they're actually going to start bearing this month. It's early on, it's June 7th. So maybe they'll do something. We've got some flowers coming in down in there. Actually, we've got lots of flowers. If I can find some for you here. Of course, none of them are going to show up now. Um, oh, there's some right over here. There's one little flower right there. And there's actually some strawberries on the sequoia. So we went with these June bearing, actually, wow, there's a lot more in there, all these green strawberries. We went with these June bears because we wanted one big, large batch to do a lot of canning all at once and get them all you know, in and done and taken care of. And then also because these are supposed to be bigger berries and a lot easier to work with. So looking forward to seeing how that turns out. I will get the name of those for you, but they are massive. And then uh, we've got our blueberries. You guys have seen this before. I need to pull some of these weeds out right here. But uh, this one, we're just kind of waiting to see if it bounces back. It sure is having to compete right now. Maybe I can do something about that. But look at this. We have got so many berries loaded up right now. Really cool to see. The last time I came out here and showed this to you guys, they were just flowers and they have all taken, I mean, despite the cool weather, despite the cool spring and all the rain we've gotten, the native pollinators must have been out better than I had seen. And all these guys are doing very well. They got pollinated. They are growing very well. Tons 
of blueberries. I mean, look at this. We are gonna get a bumper crop. Every year seems to be better and better with these blueberries and they just produce abundantly. Huge amounts of blueberries here. This is that Chandler, I believe, yeah. And it's just, a, it's an awesome blueberry. I really like this one. There's that Toro. It's a little bit further behind. Hey, there's a native pollinator. A little bumblebee down in there. Anyway, lots of blue. All these are just loaded up. All of them. Look at that. Isn't that so cool? Love those blueberries. This is that pink popcorn. Sending up a ton of new green growth for some reason. But everywhere you look. Now, this is that new bed that we did last year or uh, last year last month i think it was and we went and picked up a few new varieties from nurseries we actually had a couple of them here i think we had two plants here including this duke and then i had propagated a few in fact this is one of them that i propagated here that's a toro and it's doing real good starting to put on some new green growth there and bounce back and then this was also a toro i need to go through and weed some of this and it's doing good, starting to put on some good growth there. But these guys are just getting established. We pulled up all those other berry plants, as you saw the blueberries in that last little video, because they just weren't producing. I think it was, we bought them bald and burlapped and they had been grown in clay soil and they never got established. So we started with new plants that were bought from one gallon pots in one gallon pots in a nursery and then planted the couple that I propagated. And we're hoping that we'll get a setup like this as time goes by. I'm sure we will. Have not done anything yet with the raspberries. The raspberries are still lagging behind. Now, normally we would, by now you would see just massive amounts of, like these were from last year, these stands. These would, you'd see all these green stands like this, but they'd be green and loaded with berries just like this. But last summer, was a really weird summer here in the Pacific Northwest. We had just, I think it was the hottest summer on record. It got to like 112 or 115 here for like several days and just cooked and killed a lot of the raspberries. And uh, we just didn't get enough water to these. And so they didn't put on a lot of new growth for this year. You can see there's still a lot. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of berries but they didn't get as tall, they didn't put on as much growth, and so they're just not gonna perform as well. And then, you know, I don't wanna say we're lazy because we've got never ending jobs to do around here, but we didn't get all of, the, all of the old stuff pulled up last year. But I've talked to you in that last episode where the plan is to expand this area, and we're gonna do that and then have a little chicken run, and they're gonna go in there and weed all that for us, and I think that's what's gonna work the best so we'll pump the water to those this year and see what we get. I've already seen a lot of nice new growth coming up for next year. There's those little primacanes and they'll come up. They won't produce anything this year. We got a lot of them coming up in there. I just need to keep the water pumped to them. We just need, uh, we, those will come up this year and then do nothing. And then we'll have them in canes. And the next year they'll look like these guys and produce actual berries. Look at that. Lots of berries gonna be on those, just not as many canes this year. And then the one thing that so many people seem to love, which I know I do, is espaliate apple and pear trees. It is such a cool look. They're really developing nicely over the years. It's been a lot of pruning. It's been, you know, it's, I mean, it's not bad. It's going out there once or twice a year and spending a few hours pruning, but I really like this one. It is such a neat look there. But they're really developing nice. The last time you saw these, I think they had flowers on them. And you can see how well they're doing. So we've got apples just loaded up everywhere. Everywhere on these things. There's apples all down in there. There's more. Look at that. Just everywhere. Apples all over the place. One thing I've noticed though, the apples never seem to really develop too much. I've seen a few, but we never seem to get too many apples on the, the lower branches. 
they're always up on the top branches. I have considered cutting the bottom branches off, but I just like the look. Look at this. Check that out. I mean, this whole, this is gonna be, this is gonna be heavy. It's gonna be really pulling down. I'm gonna have to water the heck out of this to keep all those thriving, but isn't that just amazing? Look at all those apples. And that was after pruning last winter. That was after pruning. So you can see that our pruning job really helped. It really did what we wanted it to do. And we left all of those fruit spurs on there. And you can tell. I mean, look at this. I've never seen this tree loaded up so good with apples. It's just, they're everywhere. I don't know how many of them will stay on here. It just really depends on how much water and nutrition this tree can get. But... They've been planted for quite a few years now and those roots are big and strong and they don't have to support that much. Just the apples. <laughs> this one, tons of apples, not as many as that one right there, but we've still got, look at this, just loaded up everywhere you go, way back in there. Everywhere you go, tons of apples. Once again, not a lot on the lower branches. Go down here, there's two. But, uh, oh, there's a little cluster, I guess, on this guy. A little cluster right there and a few in there. But the top branch is just loaded. Every year we, uh, we plant a little area right here with zucchini. And like I said, it's been a late start this year. Just a really cool year. We started these from seed and we were on that two week vacation. So they kind of got neglected a little bit, but uh, we finally got these planted. They're flowering, but that doesn't really mean much of anything. What will happen now is it's early enough in the year, and now that we got them out of the pots, they'll start sending up nice new green growth, just tons of green growth, and the flowers will kind of slow down until later on in the summer, and then we'll just get, this will fill in this whole area with zucchini. It'll just be one massive green ball. And, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I'll put some links in the description below about some videos I did on how we fertilize these. And it, you know, it turns a lot of people off and it turns a lot of people on, but uh, it's just urine. Just, I use urine. That's all I use. And then sometimes I'll put some wood ash down and that's it. And uh, I've got some videos that you can go check out and see why it works so well and see a comparison on some zucchinis that I actually planted in that strip just behind these apples here a few years ago but uh, I've just been mowing this area lately these are those new trees that we got I did a video on that I'll put a link down below in the description but we just picked these trees up there's one more peach I got to bring back here um, that's up by the front of the house but we've got some cherry trees we've got a Bing and a Rainier because they do real well in our area and then uh is this i think this is the frost peach yeah we've got a frost peach here the other peach is uh i can't remember off the top of my head but i'll get it for you uh and then we've got two plum trees here we got an italian if i remember right and a brooks so that'll be fun i i originally in that last video told you i was going to plant these right here in a uh in another espalier row and that was kind of the plan however i really like these apples and i still i don't have honey crisp and i don't have that unknown from my mother-in-law that i grafted a few years back and so and i'll put a link to that one with the grafting but uh i i really i almost wonder if i shouldn't use this area for those honey crisp and those unknown mother-in-law i think it's a king apple and that's what she thinks but we just don't know for sure but it's a heavy producer and it would just they'd be right close to the other apples they'd pollinate each other well and everything would just be kind of in one spot the problem is i would have to figure out what to do with all of these trees and more and more i'm wondering if i don't and and if i plant those apples there i would espalier them they look just like these but what I don't know, I'm kind of wondering if I don't want to just let these grow into natural big trees and just go from there, see what happens. I just don't know where I'd plant them yet. I've thought about planting them over on that other strip on the other side of the fig orchard 
and just letting them grow big. I don't know. We'll figure that out. Let's, uh, let's, aren't those strawberries just gorgeous? That's just crazy. Let's go head over here to the fig orchard. Someday I'd love to get rid of the fence. Somebody was asking me about my old Ford tractor. I still have it, still there, still working hard. Someday we'll jump on the dozer and get that going for you. There's all those, look at that. Somebody was asking about these trees. Are they still alive? Oh yeah, they're cranking, man. Those are those 360, I think it was, fir trees. <laughs> all that new lime growth. They're doing great in those one gallon pots. People doubted it, but I need to get out here and water them again. So we'll get those planted out along the side of the property once I get all that cleared. Lots of projects. Love this orchard. I'd love to, uh, here, I'll kind of get a, a view back here. I'd love to eventually put a fence on the other side where that grass line is. Put a fence just a little bit beyond that all the way around everything you see mowed. All the way around the whole fig orchard all the way around and connect up on the back side of that chicken coop and get rid of this fence right here and then everything would be connected i'd be able to just drive the lawnmower out and just mow everything and it would all be open i hate all these fences we had to put them up because of the deer originally but if i had something else going way out around we wouldn't have to worry about the deer anymore in this little area so we'll see what happens So let's start over here. I just got everything mowed. Doesn't that just look fantastic when it's mowed? So this part of this video will be dedicated to the figs here, obviously. We're out in the fig orchard, but I'm just gonna kind of show you guys, um, especially those of you that live in the Pacific Northwest, Zone 8B, and you're wondering what is gonna grow in ground outdoors here. Now it's, it's early on in the season, and I only planted these last year, so it's gonna be hard to say it's going to take a few years to really kind of see what's going on here but i'll show you real quick i'll try to kind of make this part not so long but uh we'll go through them so this is my olympian you know what i should run back in and get my paper because it's been a while and i need to know the names all right so i'm back and i've got the master plan here so this one right here is olympian and that's kind of a staple up here in the pacific northwest on the western side of the mountains and you can see it's already leafing out it's one of them out of all of these that are leafing out you can see a few throughout the landscape there some of them died back to the ground though and are popping back up from the ground but this one is doing good we've got one little fig right there well i'll probably cut away a lot of that stuff but a lot of little growth there and then over here, we've got our Bataglia. And this one was another one, died back to the ground, but you can see lots of new growth. And that was my purpose this year. I wasn't too worried about it. The first few years, I'm not too worried about it. I just, I don't care if they die back to the ground. My whole goal right now is to just get good, strong roots established. And eventually, I'm hoping to get these things to stay alive above ground. Now, this, was the Coldadam Ramada, and I don't know that that's going to do anything. It died back, obviously. I'm just letting it sit. I'm letting it be. I don't know if anything's going to come of it. I can always find that variety again down the road if I want it. Died back to the ground here, Rockaway Green. It may not do that every year, but it did that this year. New growth coming up, looking good. And we've got our green issue. Same deal, coming up from the ground, died back. I picked up this one from Kim. We traded a little bit over the winter, some dormant uh, trees, and this is a Toro. I'm really interested in this because, here, let me get over to where you can see the new growth. Where is it? There it is. I'm really interested in this one because it's supposed to have these massive figs and it's supposed to be a good Braba crop fig. Um, anyway, we'll see what happens with that, but you can see that little growth, it is coming out. All the top growth died back, but uh, in this one I planted out in the winter, so it hasn't set in roots yet, but it's alive and it's doing well. So we should get some good root growth down underground on that one this year, and uh, I think it's gonna do just fine in our area. Then we've got the main part of the orchard over here, so I guess we could start, we'll just come on down here, show you what's happening. Hopefully uh, there's enough of you that want to see this 
from the Pacific Northwest area or from anywhere really, and just kind of see what made it, what didn't. Now, remember, we are way behind compared to a lot of people. It's June 7th today, and I see all these posts online of all these figs that are just growing really well. And a lot of those might be in warmer climates. And then also a lot of them are people who do the shuffle where they've been indoors and they're bringing them outside for sunny weather. These are not that. <laughs> These have been out all winter and they're just warming up and slowly waking up with the weather. And so I don't have the advantage of these being able to be moved into a warmer area, you know, on colder days. And we've had a cool year. So we've got our Violet Day Bordeaux. You can see it survived. New growth coming out of that one. That branch died back. These branches died back. But down low, we've got some new growth. The plant lived, and that's what my interest, did, interest is right now. I want to make sure these plants live and just put in good roots. Down here, we've got our Black Madeira KK. This was the one I actually got from KK. I uh, All my cuttings off of this this last year, these weren't really meaningful, so I didn't do anything with them. But all my good material, this, this thing was up here. But I took all the material and I sent it to Wesley over in England. We had a little trade and I don't know that he got any of them to take, but um, I'm going to make sure he gets some of these eventually when it, when it gets up in size. I was a little worried about this at first because all this top stuff died back. But you can see right down in here, get some shade on that. We've got a little branch. Let's see if we can get there. See that? Right there. We've got a little branch coming up. So the roots are strong. It was a good thick stock. It's going to come back. That was my black Madeira that I actually bought from KK um, Keith uh, and got it directly from him. Now, I know there's debate on all that. I don't really care about all that. I know some people say they're all black Madeiras. It's how you treat it. That's fine with me. I just know where I got it from. There's my Italian 258. Wish I would have took all that material as cuttings and put it in the fridge, but I didn't. It died back, but we've got new growth coming up. Our uh, Martinica Ramada died completely. I think I'm gonna leave it and just see what happens, but uh, I do have a replacement in the hoop house that's actually bigger and stronger than this one. They were both from the same plant, and so they're the same exact uh, same exact genetics and all that, but um, beautiful one. I don't wanna lose this one. I think I might've lost this, but it still feels solid in the ground. No, I thought that was some growth, but it's not. I think this one is solid in the ground still. So I don't know, you never, as the weather warms, maybe we'll see some new growth coming up. So I'm gonna leave that in there, but I do have a replacement. Got a nice replacement for it. It'd be nice to get a replacement of that replacement. <laughs> this one I was a little shocked about. This is Strawberry Verte. And I thought this would be a lot like the Batag Bataglia and the, uh, Rockaway Green and all of those and be just fine, but it is not, it is not fine. It has died back. I see no new growth. There's nothing coming up from down below. So, and this was a big, vigorous fig. And so I may have lost that, but I do have a replacement of that too. So what are you going to do? And I've got cuttings in the fridge. Um, this one right here, what is this? Now I need my, I need my math. I know what this is, but I don't know. It's been a it's been a year. All right, there's my map here. This is my Violet Solis. So there it is, all died back except for actually no, I'm wrong. There's some new growth down there. It's been a while since I've come and looked at it. I've actually got some new growth right there. I've got some new growth right there. Maybe some of these other ones back over here are doing better than I thought. Anyway, they're mostly all alive so far. A few of them, not so much, but uh, we're doing all right so far. This is my Noir de Barbantane, or Barbantan, however you say it. New growth coming up from the ground. The top part died back. And then we've got Vasilika Black, and this one came from Herman. Lots of growth. He says this is one of his top ones. It does well in the winter and you can see it's made it through just fine and putting on lots of nice new growth. Everything's so slow. It's been so cool and rainy. It's actually warmer today than it's been in a while. 
Now, if you guys remember earlier in the winter, I took a ton of, I took all the cutting material off of this. This is a big, beautiful plant up way up high. But my experience told me when it was in a pot that this thing kept dying back to the pot every year, but the roots were strong. So this was uh, my La Bourgeoisie and it did the same thing. I took a bunch of cuttings and it's starting to send up growth from down below, but uh, still alive. It's a strong one. I don't really worry about this one. I just, I never can keep the top growth alive, but it comes back every year. Maybe that'll just be cutting material. Maybe I'll never get some, you know, figs off of some of these. Who knows? My Smith, Smith died back. Tons of green growth coming up there from the base. What do we got here? We've got my Black Mission. Now, I was a little bummed about this one. I only have this one because my dad always talked about really liking Black Mission. I know it's not really meant for our climate. A lot of these aren't meant for our climate, but I liked it for that reason. Just because it was one that, you know, people do like. And I've been told that it'll grow well in our climate if it gets established. But I think this whole thing died. So it's an easy enough one to find if I want to replace it. I think I do. <laughs> Ron de Bordeaux doing really well. Everything survived all the way down the whole thing, except for maybe that little piece right there. But doing, doing outstanding. Tons of new growth coming up from the bottom there. Wind shutting the gate. And we've got some little figlets coming on in there. Anyway, Rondé Bordeaux is doing real well. Here's my Adriatic JH. I do have a replacement for this one. I think I might need it because, and I'm going to give it more time, but I don't see any new growth, so... We'll give it some more time and see what happens. I need to really wait and see how this weather warms up and what's gonna happen, what's gonna come of all this. Col de Dame Noir, so happy that this made it. Once again, I have a replacement of this one in the hoop house, but all the top growth died back. Tons of new growth right there. Not much going on yet, guys. I'm just keeping it all maintained right now. Actually, I've been doing more mowing and weed eating than I have been enjoying fig trees so far. <laughs> but that's the way it goes in this area, especially when it's cool and rainy. Then we've got our, what is that, Col de Dame Blanc. Everything died back, tons of new growth down in there, which would be expected uh, with the Col de Dames. This one I'm a little disappointed in. This was my Col de Dame grease that I got from, I, you know, I don't want to go into names, but uh, too much. I've told you before, I think, but I got this one from a very reputable source that we know it's a Col de Dame grease, and I think it didn't make it. I think it died. I thought it was big enough to plant out and make it through the winter. I'm going to leave it, see if new growth comes out, but I think it might not have made it, and I don't have a replacement for that one. So there it is. This is my Col de Dame grease that I got from Herman. And this thing performs year after year. Now, you can see it's it's slower to get started like all the Col de Dames are, but I've got new growth up all the way up into here. Some of the branches look like they died back, but um, the roots are strong, the trunk is strong, and I got all kinds of green growth coming all the way around here. So I've still got a Col de Dame grease. Um, this is kind of weird and disappointing. So this one right here is my hollier that I got from Steve and it was a strong tree. I think it was in a seven gallon pot. Maybe it was only a two gallon or I mean a five gallon. But uh, this was my strongest growing tree last year. And it was, it was just huge and bushy. And for some reason, the mice didn't do this to anything except for this tree right here. It ate all the way around the entire thing i haven't seen anything new come up from the ground and so i think i've just i don't have any replacements i think i've lost hollier um i don't think it's a real tough variety to get so i think i'll be okay if i want to replace it and i think i do want to replace it what i probably need to do is contact steve because i really liked his genetics um so anyway 
we lost Hollier. It wasn't to the cold, I don't think. It was to the mice. Uh, that was something a lot of people were wondering how this hay was going to work out and if mice were going to just try to live in it and eat all my figs. Well, that was the only one that I saw any mice damage on throughout this whole thing. It's too rotted down, I think. Here, let me get down here and show you. It's it's just nasty and wet. It's, it's cold, nasty, wet, rotten. I see worms in there. I don't think mice would want to live in that. But uh, it's worked out great as mulch. And helped insulate a little bit from the cold. All right, what variety do we have here? This one is our brown turkey. And it's just starting to put on some new growth. I've never had real good luck with the brown turkey, oddly enough, but uh, it's hanging in there. <laughs> we'll see what it does. Over here, I did lose my Cavalier, unfortunately. It rotted back to the ground. It was a small rooted cutting. I think I got that one from Dan. It was a beautiful plant that he sent. And uh, it, it was my fault. I planted the thing out just too young and I thought I'd be okay. But obviously, it was an ant. And I thought I'd be okay, but obviously I wasn't. And it's in there strong, so I'm just gonna leave it. I don't know, maybe I'll get new growth. But I did take a big fat cutting off of it. So I gotta try and root that thing. And then we've got Ben's Golden Riverside. This one, I don't think it made it, but I've got the main plant inside the hoop house that I keep getting cuttings off of. Oh, yeah, that definitely didn't make it. <laughs> but uh, it once again, too small. It was just a newly rooted cutting and it just didn't survive the winter. I need to grow these things up. That's something to consider. If you're gonna plant out in an orchard and Western Washington, grow them up in seven gallon pots and get good thick trunks before you try planting them out. This one, Colonel Lippman's Black Cross, actually surprised me. It was a very young plant and it survived. So Colonel Lippman's Black Cross, it survived and is doing very well. It's putting on new growth right down there at the base. Calderona, a little nervous about. I've had this one for a few years now. Got this one from Keith and uh, I don't know if I lost it or not. It's hard to say. I don't see any any green growth. Actually, there's something that looks like it might be alive still, but I don't see any green growth yet. But some of these, it's like I said, it's been so cool. And some of these, some of these varieties, I'm trying to find like green down there. Some of these varieties are, uh, oh, it is alive. Look at that. And get this in the light. Look at that. See that? I don't know if you can see that. There it is. It is alive. My Calderona made it. Some of them are hard to say just because, the, you know, it's so cool. And one thing about the our area is we do have long, late Indian summers. And it, it stays hot into the beginnings of October. But... Uh, a lot of years these springs do go on long and cool and so they just don't always get enough heat through the summer here's the improved celeste this one performed just amazingly last year really happy with this because you know it's it's just a kind of a standard figgy variety that's got a figgy flavor and nothing too special but it pumped out the figs man it's reliable doing real well so if you're in our area Improved Celeste is definitely one I'd get, a staple that's gonna perform. This one I am really excited about. I hope I get some figs on it this year. This is Tacoma Violet. Ben B recommended this one. And, uh, ooh, there's a little queen right there. I need to take care of her before that becomes a problem. Anyway, uh, Ben B recommended this one for our area and he is right. This is actually a very good tasting berry flavor. I got one fig off of it last year. It wasn't even the best fig. It was, you know, it was so new in the ground. I am looking, I don't know if I've got any figs on there this year, but I'm looking forward to this establishing over time because it was such a good fig, totally different than the improved Celeste. Uh, here we've got Borgeso Grease. And this one I'm a little concerned about, but it's been a few days since I've been out here and looked at everything. 
So let's try to find some green on it. Is there any green? Do you guys see any? That trunk is really strong. It's strong. It was a strong trunk when I put it in. It was a bigger tree. I think I had it in a seven gallon pot. So I'm hoping to see growth. This was one that was definitely always a very late variety to actually start. And, and I almost got rid of it because I kept thinking it was dying, but then it would send up new growth late and it would just take off and catch up. So we'll give it some time. It was a strong tree. Uh, this one right here, I was worried about it first, Maltese Beauty, but it sending up tons of new growth fast. Just like I'm talking about, like it had nothing a week and a half, two weeks ago and just boom out of nowhere. I, more and more, I'm really liking that Maltese Beauty. I haven't tasted a fig off of it yet, but I'm hoping to get one soon. This was an amazing fig for our area. I just need these trees to get established. It actually, you know, for our area, it survived really nicely. It pumps out big, really tasty figs. It's got new growth at the bottom there too. I want to do a big couple air layers on this thing, knock this thing back down. But uh, this is Stella. You can see we got a couple little figs in there. Not much, but uh, it's alive. It's doing well. Hopefully I'll get something off of it this year. This one, I just don't know about. Sawadi. I haven't seen any new growth yet. And it was another one that was kind of later. But I don't see any green. May not have made it. I don't know for sure. What do we have here? Chicago Hardy. Look at that. Doing great. Couple little figs in there, not many. Still young plants. This one I always think is going to die and then it starts surprising me, but De Tre Asplets. You can see a lot of the branching survived. It's starting to pump out some green growth. We just, we need hotter weather. It's been so cool. This one, <laughs> Desert King, looking forward to this. We've got some figs forming there. I've still never had a Desert King fig. I've been doing this for like five or six years now, five years at least. And uh, I've never gotten a single fig off of that tree. This might be the first year. Look at that, there's another one. They just need to go in the ground maybe, I don't know. But uh, I'm looking forward to tasting one of those because I keep hearing people rave about them in this area. Oh, there's another fig, look at that. Another fig. As the years go by, I think we're really gonna see just some awesome figs off of these trees we just got to get past the first few years of getting established ponte tresa new growth it survived and then last but not least laterula and this is also a really good one last year lots of growth all over i don't see any figs yet but uh we're doing good a little warm weather and i think we're gonna see something nice here this orchard turned out just beautiful. Still got a lot of extra room over here. Maybe I'll put my peaches and plums and cherries over here. I don't know, we'll see. Beautiful. Well, I almost forgot to show you. So I'm back in this part of the orchard here and uh, I picked up a couple new grapes this past winter from Kim up in Seattle. And I'm looking to eventually line this whole fence area with grapes. And so this one right here is a Reliance. And it's starting to send up some new growth. Really beautiful, doing good. It'll take a few years before they get established, but uh, I've got nothing but time. And then this one is a Kyoho. I think that's how you pronounce it, Kyoho. But I'm, you know, the pictures she had on her Instagram and YouTube were just beautiful. And thank you, Kim, for providing these. I just cannot wait to see them producing. I think it's gonna be really awesome stuff. And then eventually I'll probably put another one right in here and we'll have a whole wall of grapes all the way around. So I think that's a wrap. Hopefully most of you hung in there with me. Uh, the figs are really starting to develop, but they're young. They've only been in the ground one year. They did go all the way through a long cold winter out there. We had plenty of freezes. We got snow last year. And so that's to be expected. Um, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to two years, three years, four years, five years down the road when those things really get established. We got good strong roots and they can support nice thick trunks. I think it's really gonna work out well out there. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you wanna follow along. Have a fantastic week and I'll come back out 
and I will update you on how all this is doing again. I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.